All right. A new month means new gotcha revenue. All right. I want to wait a little bit longer than posting on the f uh, than recording on the first day. Uh, usually I record on the first day, then upload on the second day um, for these things. But I wanted to wait until the second day uh, just in case, because the last two times, two, three times, uh, Sensor Tower has proven to be false and has given out wrong information before. But at the end of the day, this is still like the best way to look at how gacha games are performing month to month. And uh, I figured this time I wanted to start at the bottom to see all the gacha games that I don't know because there are some gacha games that I honestly that I do recognize. I've played some of them, haven't played all of them. Um, but I, was, I just wanted to see because I know, like, we all know the Hoyaverse game is going to be at the top, Weathering Way is going to be at the top. Uh, but uh, no, I just wanted to check, go from the bottom up and see, see how the games fared for step no, October. I don't know why it says September. Got it, October. All right, let's start with the bottom. We go, we're gonna go up, make our way up. Now, first things first, we got Girls Frontline and Final Fantasy Brave Exodus. Never heard of this game, uh, but I haven't heard of, but I haven't heard of a lot of Final Fantasy games. The only Final Fantasy games I've played is Dissidia 14, 14? No, Dissidia 13, 13, 2, and 15. Those are only, f and seven, uh, remake. Uh, but other than that, I haven't played any other Final Fantasy games. Didn't even know they had a gotcha game. Makes sense though. But uh, based on the skull and crossbone, I'm going to assume this means end of service. <laughs> That's what I'm assuming this means. Uh, end of service. Because there's no way they dropped from over 300k to $0 if it wasn't end of service. That's what I'm assuming what that means. So uh, uh, rip these games, I guess. Um, Black Clover M. I have heard of this game. I don't know if it's global. I think this might be Japanese only. I don't know if this uh, this has a global market, but uh, apparently it's down. Made 30k a month. Here's the thing with a lot of these gacha games. You have to understand that a lot of these gacha games, a lot of these are even if it's not breaking the hundred thousand, all these are still pretty good. The because of the how much it costs to actually produce and maintain these games, like because the costs to maintain these games are very fucking low. A lot of these are mobile games. It, it takes it takes a fraction of all this money to. Uh, maintain the game so this is pretty much this is still really good profit even if it's just 40k a month that's still very good but uh when the school scroll we got one pen one punch man world i did i do know about this game where to go i do know about this game haven't played it uh will never play it because i'm not that much of a one punch man uh fan anymore uh it looks like they broke even uh what else we got girls frontline jp so i guess the chinese servers for girls frontline is just end of service but uh, the JP is still, uh, or is it global? Oh, global, global and JP. Okay. Global and JP are still, uh, going strong. Well, global, well, JP broke even and then global is down 10 K, but not that much. Um, what else we got? What else? What are some of these, some of these things that I recognize, uh, AFK arena. Um, honestly, I've heard of AFK, AFK. I know about AFK. I just, I've never thought to play it because you know afk away from keyboard it's a game that you that you mostly play by not playing it that's that's just that's the conundrum of afk arena and it's just i don't know it just doesn't strike me as a game that i want to play um Persona 5 the phantom x i know about this game i've not tried it i don't even know if this i don't know is this game is this game out globally because this is korea is this game out globally or is it just korea and i'm assuming japan as well because i'm a huge persona 5 fan. persona 5 is what got me into the persona series to begin with uh i remember i play i have persona i i didn't play persona 5 but i watched like a let's play of it uh and then i played persona 5 strikers I actually have it on my i actually have it on my steam account it's the only game that like uh it's the only game that i've almost 100 percented in, in terms of achievements but i'm one trophy away from getting it and that trophy is so hard to get that i just said fuck it i'm not I just gave up and just stopped playing it, but I might play Persona 5 Strikers again. Um, so I don't. So I've seen ads for, that, for this game, but I haven't touched it. I don't even know if it's even out globally. It probably is because it's fucking Persona. But um, I don't know. I don't feel like a Persona Gacha game is my type of thing. Uh, Double May Cry Peak of Combat. 
I'm shocked that this game is making as much money. I know CN. Okay, CN is making breaking even. CN is making dog shit money. I'm keeping it real. This is horrible for CN. Um, but Global is only down 10k from 180k. So I guess that's pretty good. Um, but Devil May Cry Pico Combat. I'm I'm actually surprised. Well, I guess I guess I shouldn't be surprised because it's gacha games. I mean, uh, I mean literally what I'm about to say you can say about Genshin Impact as well. But I've heard so many people say this game is dog shit, and like nobody likes to play this game. But this, apparently, this game is still making a good amount of money. <laughs> um, so is, is, no, I guess it's Tower Fantasy. This game hasn't ended of service yet. I thought, I thought they, I legit thought they ended of service this game. Like I thought this game didn't exist anymore because of how much, because of how horrible the launch was and how horrible like people hated. I genuinely did not know this game was still running. I thought this game like ended. I thought this game ended of service like a year ago. I'm not kidding. I thought this game was done. <laughs> All right. Well, let's hope. Well, I know these guys are making Neverness to Everness, so let's hope that game is pretty good. Um, we got Black Clover M. I know nothing about Black Clover the series at all. I haven't read the manga, haven't watched the anime, uh, so I don't know if, if the gacha game would be any good. Uh, based on this, maybe not. But it could also just be a dry period, so that could also be a thing. Uh, Punishing Grey Raven, always love my Punishing Grey Raven. Uh, breaking Even. Uh, it's actually very interesting. I think I, th I actually think Punishing Grey Raven should be a study case for gacha games because Punishing Grey Raven, bro, like Punishing Grey Raven, I think really is one of the very few gacha games where FOMO doesn't exist because all the all the really big fights because the way their banners work in Punishing Grey Raven, oh, like okay, so how do I explain this? Okay, so like. Let's take uh, Genshin, for example, right? Look at Genshin. The way the banners work is you have the premium character banner that's going up for 100% guarantee, or not 100% guarantee, but 100% up rate, meaning that's the character that you're going to get if you pull on this banner, right? And then they have another banner where they have three different five stars that are at a 70% up rate, meaning, it's, uh, meaning you're more likely to uh, not get the character if you pull the five star, right? But you have three different characters, three different five stars that are uh, have 70% up rate, and you pick one of them you pick and you can pick any of them it's not random you pick one and then that's the one that you're pulling for so even if you miss the fight so let's say so let's say uh so the last banner let's say okay so let's say this banner right now this banner right now we have uh uh shalonen right let's say you skip shalonen literally the way it would work is this patch you didn't get some shalonen so then uh so this is what 5.1 so and then in 5.3 shalonen would show up in that banner with the three characters three different characters and you can just pick her and then go for her even though you skipped her this this uh this patch that's why punching great raven is the easiest game to be free to play in and the way and it, it's and i for the longest time i was like how the hell do they keep making money especially with weathering waves coming out how the hell do they keep making a good amount of money like this and then global Let's go up and see if I can uh, see Punching or even Global. Uh, where's Global? I've lost it. <laughs> I've lost it. All right, but the point is, the point is, they still make a good amount of money despite the fact Weather Waves exists and despite the fact that like you you really can go completely free to play in uh, Punching Raven. It's like a, it, it was like how the hell do they still making this much money? And it's like one is like genuine support, right? Because you know when a company is like when you have a company that like you you like really like and like you see that they're actually like putting in the work to make the game good, you genuinely want to support them. So like yeah, you're more likely to spend uh, money on the game, right? goodwill goodwill is a tangible asset it really is and then the second thing is they're just recouping all that money from get all the free shit that they're giving away by all the skins that they throw into the game they really are all that money that they're making is coming from all right, okay i'm not gonna say all but like the vast majority of that money is coming from the skins that they put in that game and i really feel like that is a very good way to allow gotcha games to be more generous and still make a good amount of money and it's like it I really feel like a lot of these gacha games should really uh, should really take note of that and just and just go go that route. Uh, yeah, here we go. Global Punishing Raven up 100k from the last uh, from the last patch from the last uh, from last month. Probably because probably because uh, the last uh, banner or the last uh, patch was, was a collab with Black Rock Shooter. So, and that's like and that's like the only FOMO character because it's collaboration right so you actually don't know if they're ever going to come back right because it's a collab right so that was probably the, the big reason why this big reason why this is probably um 
why this is here why this uh why this number went up but um yeah that's probably like the only instance of omo and in raven but um yeah like, i feel like a lot of gosh games are just follow that route and uh that could allow a lot of these, a lot of these gosh games to be more generous and just give more rewards so that people can pull for characters but um you know uh they don't have to um, especially genshin and uh, especially hoiverse games they don't have to do that shit because people are going to spend money on those games <laughs> anyway so that doesn't really matter i guess um honkai impact third i keep telling myself that i'm eventually going to try this game one day and then i keep realizing that there's no english dubbing and i don't want to play i don't want to i want to play a video game in a language i fucking speak so yeah i want to try it it looks interesting especially with the fact that there's no dudes uh but um you know it is what it is uh i'm probably never gonna play honkai back third <laughs> it's just the fucking truth uh epic seven i remember this game uh didn't play it much i think i played it like twice I think, yeah i think i played it like twice and that was it uh i got bored real quick and i just didn't touch it ever again um path to nowhere uh i remember hearing about this game uh, but damn, made 1.1 mil last last month. Holy shit! And then it went, it got, it went a drastic downward spiral. But uh, still 825k. That's still a lot. Alright, we're still making our way up. Bleach Brave Souls. This is probably the only gotcha game that I had on my phone. I remember I played Bleach Brave Souls for quite a long time. I played this game a lot. Didn't spend any money because I was like a broke college kid at the time. I believe it was like 2018 or something like that. I had this game. I played it a lot. Um, but uh, I didn't spend any money because I didn't know because I didn't know what a gotcha game was back in like 28, 2018 2019. I didn't know what a, Genshin is what taught me what a gotcha game was. I didn't know Bleach Briefles was a gotcha game. I, thought, I just thought it was a game with microtransactions. That's what I thought. Um, but I played the shit out of it for a hot like two months and then I never <laughs> and then I never played it again. Uh, what else? What else? Let's go up. Blue Archive. We got another one here. Reverse 1999. Uh, I don't. I actually don't remember what this game was about. I remember seeing this game everywhere and I just stopped playing it. Uh, Wuthering Waves, the CN, or the Chinese, down by 50%. That's a lot. Um, 50%. This is... No, this is the... This is the... Short Keep Banner. That is surprising. Because this was... Because this was... um. This is when uh, they gave Shang Li out for free. So, so despite the fact that they gave Shang Li out for free, and now we have Shorekeeper, or 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 what it could be, what it could be is because they got Shang Li out for free, people were saving to get Shorekeeper. That's probably what it was. Because they gave Shang Li out for free, people were like, okay, I don't need to spend money, and then they were saving, and then they used those savings to get Shorekeeper. That's just probably what happened. That's probably why there's this is here. But I'm. But I know for a fact, uh, what the fuck was his name? Camellia. I think that was her name. Camellia. Camellia is going to be the highest selling banner. hundred uh, percent. Camellia is going to break the fucking, uh, Wuthering Waves, uh, shop again. A hundred percent. I'm going to I don't give a fuck if I have to spend money. I'm getting Camellia. Holy fuck. She's way too hot not to get. Dragon C, Dragon Ball Z, Dokken Battle. Uh, this is a ma this is a drastic drop. Holy fuck! I have I feel like Sparking Zero probably had a uh, it's probably a factor in this uh, in this massive drop. I feel yeah, I definitely feel like Sparking Zero is definitely a factor in this massive drop. But either way, that's still a horrendous drop. Holy shit! That is massive. That is definitely like this is this is a type of drop where you have to literally look and be like, what did we do wrong? That's what that's the kind of drop is. Uh. Nikkei, bro, I, I, Nikkei is also a game where I'm just like, I'll try it eventually, and then I'm just like, but I have all these other games that I'm playing, and I'm just like, I do I really want to play a game just because there's massive jiggle physics? I mean, I have Zen Zone Zero for that, right? You know what I mean? So it's like, I, 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 I don't know, I don't know. Apparently, the story is incredible. I've heard the story is great, but uh, I don't know. All right, and then we're back at the top with our uh, usual Hoyverse and then uh, Hoyverse games. Uh, we got Zone Zone Zero down nine mil, down nine mil. This is September, so which is this? This is what? 
This is what, what, what? Uh, Caesar King and then Caesar King and then someone else. Who was before Caesar King? Why is my memory so bad? Who was before Caesar King? Was it Ching? No, not Ching Yi. Who the fuck was before Caesar King? Am I crazy? I don't remember who was before Caesar King, but um, uh, this is this is actually pretty surprising. Um, down nine mil, and this is with Bernice. This is with Burton. This is with Bernice. Bernice is down was like one of the most Coomer characters in the Gooner characters in the entire game, alongside with Jane Doe. So that is actually very surprising to me. Uh, I'm actually like like gen I'm actually like genuinely surprised. Like this is down this much with Bernice and Caesar King. That's wild to me. Cause I know I know many people, especially after that trailer, bro. People were horny for Bern Bernice, myself included. But uh, damn, I'm surprised. But I guess I can't really talk because I'm one of the people that has. I'm like I haven't spent that much money in Zen Zone Zero because I just skip a lot of the characters like. Of all the characters I've come out, I think I've only gotten Ellen, Jane Doe, and Bernice. Everyone else I don't have. Like limited characters. I have some of the standard characters because I've lost 50-50 a couple times. But um nah, I think that's basically it. Uh AFK Journey. I think well, AFK Journey is like the sequel, right? Yeah, because it's March 24. Because I remember AFK, I remember AFK came out with like another game that um I'm also not gonna play. I've heard this game sucks too. But uh, yeah, not playing that. Honkai Star Rail down 33, down to 19.3 mil from which banners? Uh, okay, so this includes Rapa. So this does include Rapa because Rapa came out last week. This does include Rapa. So Rapa and Lingsha. Yeah, right. Rapa and Lingsha. Um, I'm trying to see if it does make. I guess it does make. You know what? No, 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 no. I think it does make sense because Lingsha. The thing with Lingsha is. People, myself included, did not pull for Lingsha because Gallagher exists. Gallagher, like, yes, Lingsha is better than Gallagher, but not enough to justify spending money to get Lingsha. I'm keeping it real. The only reason you're pulling for Lingsha is because you refuse to use Gallagher or because you, you jack off to her. And the only reason you're pulling for Lingsha because Gallagher is just too good to justify spending money to get Lingsha. That's just the truth. So I think, I think Gallagher is a very big part as to why this went down. Um... Because people just didn't pull for it, but it doesn't really matter because when Sunday and uh, Fugue or Ting Yun, when Sunday and Ting Yun come out, that shit's gonna break. That shit's gonna break 100 mil, no no questions asked. 100 percent. That that banner, people are hyped for that banner. That banner is gonna break 100 mil easily. Um, again, same thing. I would say the same thing for global as well over here. Genshin Impact up on both markets, CN and global. Uh, cause people were just really down bad for Shalonen. <laughs> people really wanted Shalonen. Uh, which makes sense. She's hot, plus, uh, she's basically another Kazua. So I guess it makes sense. Um, what else? We got Naruto Mobile. I, I've never even heard of this game. <laughs> Naruto Mobile. I've never heard of this game at all. I didn't even know this game was a thing. I know that I know there's Naruto Mobile games, but just Naruto Mobile is that like actually sponsored by fucking uh, Masishi Kiyomoto? Is that actually like it's just Naruto Mobile? <laughs> like, what is this about? <laughs> All right, and then again for I think what the third or fourth month in a row, Love in Deep Space is number one. Holy shit! I think Love in Deep Space should also be a study case for Gacha games because it's been like. It's been like a thing for the longest time that like only women sell money in gacha games because you know sex sells and everybody's horny for women but i guess love in deep space is really showing it's really showing that there is a market for hot dudes i mean yeah it did lose it did lose money uh this month but that could have been just like i don't know i don't play this game so it could be just like a, a dry patch or some shit you know maybe there's a character or a rerun who the fuck knows uh what is it what, what is this game even about i'm gonna keep it like you <laughs> <laughs> what is this game even about? Is there like fighting or anything? Like, what is this, what is this game about? Like, how do you sell these characters that you like? Like, if you spend money and you get these characters, do you fuck them? Like, what what, what happens when you get these characters? I don't know. 
But uh, no, I think Love of Deep Space should be another case study on like Aja games because like it's still number one again for like the third month in a row, maybe fourth. And uh, it's really showing that like, yeah, men men can sell in gacha games too. And if Sunday and Honkai Star Wars sells too, hey, I think we might start seeing more male characters in the gacha games. Uh, but yeah, so that's the monthly. Didn't really have any predictions because there was not really anything massive going on. A lot of a lot of the games were kind of just doing their own thing. There weren't, there weren't really any big things going on in the gacha games. I didn't really have any predictions, but um. So, for this month, what do we got? But I think I'm going to make some prediction, predictions for the next one. So, for this one, what do we got? For this, for Honkai Star Rail, it's going to be uh, Rapa, and then whoever comes out first in 2.7, which will either be Sunday or Fugue. If it's Fugue, 5-star Tingyun. I hope to God 5-star Tingyun comes out second, because I'm going to skip Sunday. I want I want uh, Tingyun. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Whoever comes out, they're going to make a shit ton of money. And then um, Genshin Impact, it's going to be Chaska and that other dude. And I've seen, as much as I didn't want to, I did see the leaks of Chaska's gameplay. And holy shit, that is like, I think they were like, whoever designing Chaska's kit was definitely doing a line while they were making her kit. <laughs> because what the fuck was that? Um, and then we got Zen Zone Zero. We got uh, Tsunagi next. And... I'm probably gonna skip her because I want Miyabi so bad. So I think I might skip her. Um, I have like 50 pulls saved up, so I might try to get her. If I get her, I don't. If I lose 50 50, great. I'm guaranteed for Miyabi. Um, but after that, no, nah, I think. Those are Hongasaro, Genshin Impact. Wuthering Waves. Ah, then Wuthering Waves. Wuthering Waves, Camellia. I assume I'm willing to wager that Camellia is gonna be their best banner yet. Um,. Because Camellia is just so fucking hot. Uh, I think Camellia will definitely be their best banner. But uh, yeah, so those are my predictions for the future. Um, yeah, that's just the review. Nothing really too spectacular, nothing too outrageous, nothing out of the ordinary, really. Uh, there are some outliers here and there. But um, nah, like, uh, yeah. The revenue charts, once again, hopefully these are accurate. Hopefully these are accurate. But uh, yeah, I'm excited for next month. We shall see again next month.